in our interceptor utility or Ford Explorer, we have the dummy piece, the dummy cover right up here up at the front of the hood. So that is where the sun load sensor will go. But first we have to get out that dummy plug and hopefully we will find a harness underneath there for the actual sensor. So I expect this cover to be held in by a snap on the short sides, that is the left side and the right side of this. And now I have either long side lifted up. So the right side here is being supported up in the air and I'm gonna try just wedging a really thin flat screwdriver under there. There we go. There is my harness. So perfect, that's exactly what I was hoping for. So I'm not gonna remove this cover until I have the sensor in hand because I don't want to lose that connector down into the dash. And here is the sensor. And here's what it looks like. The way you can tell the cap from the sunload sensor is that the sunload sensor has this kind of trapezoidal hump in the middle of it. So it's taller than the cap. So I'm going to depress this tab here that's on the right side. There we go. Just install this like so. Make sure that it's on there all the way. Wipe the dust from around the hole and push it down in. There we go. Sun load sensor installed. To remove the old switch, we have to do a similar process to the sun load sensor. That is, we have to release the tabs that are currently clipping it into the dash. But rather than try to go around the switch here, it's easier to just go behind it. So this panel right here pops off, so I'm just going to pull it off. And you can see there's there should be four clips holding it on, three and then one at the top. The one at the top on my Explorer here is broken. Now that we have this panel off, we can look at the back of the switch. And we should have two tabs on the top and two tabs on the bottom. And there are the tabs that we can see. There's one, there's two, and then there will be two identical ones on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the connector to the back of the switch. There's just one squeeze tab on the far side right here. And your car may not like it that you've unplugged something. <laughs> so aside from the constant beeping of the car because I unplugged the old switch, removing the old switch was really not too bad. I was actually able to use my fingers to just press on the tabs for these four corners. This bottom corner over here, I did have to use a screwdriver and sort of feel around for the for the hump down there and then press up on it um, while while pulling out on the switch. Pull it out, wedge something in there, and then move on to the next tab. And there's our switch. The new switch is made by standard. It is an HLS1756. Thankfully the car went back to sleep and so the constant chiming has stopped. But here is the old switch and the new switch. Old switch is on the top, new switch is on the bottom, and you'll notice two differences between the two. The new switch has the auto headlight function on the center knob, and it has the fog light button on the left side there. I do not currently have fog lights on this Explorer, but someday I might install them, and so I wanted to have the option of the OEM button there. So keep that in mind when I show you the part number that I bought, is that that part number is for this particular configuration of switch. And even though this new switch came in a box that says Standard, which is the company that made it, it turns out that it is a Ford part. So see the FOMO Co. there? So Standard, I would say, definitely makes these parts for Ford. Both switches have 12 pins. The plug here only has nine wires. It could be that the fog lights use the three remaining pins. I'm really not sure. So I might not have the wiring for fog lights, but Again, I wanted the option, so I bought the switch with the fog light button. Install the new switch, you just press the connector in, and snap the switch into place. Yep, 
and the side panel just pushes back on. Now that we have the sun load sensor and the headlight switch installed, now we need to program the vehicle to properly utilize those pieces of hardware. We're going to use Forescan on this laptop right here. So we have our laptop connected to the Explorer via our USB to OBD dongle that I'll provide a link to in the description below. And now I'm going to roll the key to the on position. Now we're going to click in the bottom left on the connect button. And you can see in the bottom left it says ready, which means we are good to go. So now I'm going to click on the microchip looking icon in the center left. And next we will be updating two modules in particular. One is the body control module, and the other is IPC. And I'm not really sure exactly what it stands for, but generally it's something to do with the instrument cluster. So first, let's go to the IPC. So I'm going to go to module configuration and hit play. And then we are going to go down to adaptive headlights is right here and we're going to leave that disabled we're also going to leave this disabled we're going to scroll down to auto lamp delay menu and we are going to enable this and I also want to enable daytime running lamps there we go daytime running lamps menu and that is enabled The rain sensor is more to do with auto dimming rear view mirrors and rain detecting windshield wipers than it is the auto headlamp control. So I'm going to leave that disabled so that it doesn't accidentally interfere with anything. So now we are going to hit right. And the only thing that I changed here was the auto lamp delay menu. And then it requests that you cycle the key. So I'm going to do that now. So go off and then back to the on position, but do not start it, and hit OK. And then hit stop in the bottom left. And go back to configuration and programming. And now we're going to go to the body control module, this one right here, where it says module configuration, but not as built. And hit play. So now I'm going to go through several different settings. And some of them may already be set correctly, um, but I'm just going to check them. So first is allow daytime running lamp options. So I'm going to leave that on all options. And then ambient light sensor is enabled. That is what we just installed. Ambient light sensor type, I'm going to set this on fast. Either one should work. It's just how quickly it responds to changes in daylight. Now, ambient lighting feature, I'm going to leave disabled. I believe that has more to do with accessory lighting inside the vehicle on some of the higher trim levels. So now I'm going to scroll down to daytime running lamps again. And let's say we will leave this on daytime running lamp only, enabled. These next four options about daytime running lamps by auto lamps, personal one, two, three, and four, I'm going to disable all of those. And then daytime auto lamps by a vehicle, I'm going to leave that one enabled. Daytime running lamp configuration, I'm going to set to dedicated daytime running lamps. Daytime running lamp or running lights includes parking lamps. I'm going to use or leave that enabled. So now I'm going to go down to parking lamps. Park lamp type. And I'll leave it on position only. And this rain light sensor and rain sensor, I'm going to leave those disabled because again, it's really a different sensing product not the sensor that we just installed. And using daytime running lamps with turn signals, I'm going to leave that installed. 
So the daytime running lamp feature and the auto headlamp, headlamp feature, I believe, are connected to each other. And so that's why I went through those particular options. So now, we'll say right. And then I will cycle the ignition key again. And then hit stop. And I like to go back to the car icon in the top left and then hit disconnect. So now we are ready to test our headlights. So let's start the car and see what the lights do. So the switch is currently in the off position, the light switch that is. Okay, the car is running with the switch in the off position. Now I'm going to turn it to auto. So it is now on auto, and it looks like all lights are on. I can see the rear lights are on, I can see the headlights are on, and it looks like the parking lights and marker lights are on as well. It seems bright in here, but I'm going to make it even brighter by putting a flashlight on the sun load sensor. So you can see the flashlight right there. So I'm going to point it pretty much right on the sun load sensor. Hey, look at that. Okay, the lights went off. So headlights, parking lights, marker lights, rear lights, they all went off. We also had said that the daytime running lights should be coupled to the automatic headlights because if you want your headlights to go on at night during the day, you might want daytime running lights. So let's see if I put the vehicle into gear, if the lights come back on. So I'm going to put it in neutral and set the parking brake. Okay, so now the parking brake is set and I have my foot off the brake. Looks like my brake lights are still slightly illuminated and my headlights are definitely on and I think my turn signals might also be illuminated, my parking lights that is. So I'm going to switch back to full headlights on the switch here. So when I turn the switch to headlights on, my headlights do get brighter. So this is apparently daytime running lamps, which is essentially a dimmed low beams, and this is headlights full on. So daytime running lamps, headlamps full on. So I can see that there is a difference there. I'll consider that a win. It's not exactly what I expected. I, I expected for daytime running lamps for um, taillights to be off and the turn signal markers to be off as well. So I'm going to go into my dash here to vehicle settings and go to lighting and uncheck daytime running lamps, which is now an option in the dashboard. And there are all of the lights are going on and off. So this is me just changing the setting in the dash, uh, which it's nice to have that option. There's also an auto lamp delay of off 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds. So the low beams here are essentially in a low power mode when running as daytime running lights. This is kind of unique to police interceptor utilities because the regular explorers actually have an LED light that goes around the whole headlamp enclosure here and that acts as the daytime running lamp. But in my case, I do not have that. The police interceptor utilities did not come with that LED ribbon around the outside. And so the headlight itself is a daytime running lamp and I'm okay with that. Thanks for watching this video. If it helped you, let me know by liking it and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or want to give me some feedback. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.